Would you be shocked if I told you that in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, there's a game releasing that is specifically about a virus that spreads rapidly and wipes out multiple villages? Well, friends, I'm Jace with I Dream of Indie, and Unforeseen Incidents is exactly that. Hello there. Hey, what can I get you? Barkeep, give me a drink. To be fair, Unforeseen Incidents did originally release on PC back in 2018, so it was pre-pandemic at the time. However, I'll admit I was a little bit shocked and a little bit turned off initially by the plot because it just felt a little bit too close to home with everything going on with Omicron and, and coronavirus right now. Putting all that aside, I still played through the game, and what I found was an ultimately enjoyable point-and-click adventure title. Although, as I said before, the story did turn me off a little bit at first just because of what it was about, I will say that the humor is really good. It's, it's dark and adult, but it's very funny. I really enjoyed the characters and the interactions. Overall, at the end, ultimately, I thought it was pretty good. It is a little bit on the predictable side, still quality writing, and again, an overall enjoyable story. Now, if you're a fan of the genre, you'll know that there's various styles of point-and-click adventure. There's ones where you move your character around and can have lots of inventory items at the same time and lots of options with interacting with various people or things, something like Thimbleweed Park or the old Monkey Islands. Or there's the style where there's still pictures and you're sort of just doing a seek and find and moving from scene to scene, but you're not actually moving your character around or anything like that. I'm happy to report that this is my preferred style, which is more like the old Monkey Island games. Your inventory could be upwards of 15 items at once. It's very old school in that you have to move around and you have to do things in a very specific order. You can't just pick everything up unless you've done something that warrants picking it up. Sometimes you can, of course, but a lot of the times you'll have to do things in a specific order before you can prompt certain conversations with characters or certain abilities to interact with different items. This game feels right at home on the Nintendo Switch. They added touch controls which is a great option and actually works better than the typical controller options in my opinion. It makes it a lot easier to find things on the screen uh, since the cursor is a little bit slow and also it makes interacting with items easier since you can just drag and drop. However, it does still work very well in docked mode or if you wanted to use the controllers in handheld mode. I will note that there is the occasional unfortunate abstract or a little bit too confusing puzzle where it doesn't quite make sense. A good example of it is there was one moment where all of my inventory was stolen by somebody and when I got it back it all came back plus an additional item. That item was among 15, 16, 17 different items and so I didn't even notice it got added to my inventory because there were just so many things. And I couldn't progress the story without looking at that item, which I had no idea was there. So there were a couple instances like that where I got stuck and it seemed a little bit unfair or just I would have loved a little hint system, um, which there is none in this game. So if you're not great at puzzles or kind of sideways thinking, a guide might be needed for you to get through this, especially at these kinds of moments. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but it is few and far between. It, these moments did not happen very often. I'd say 95% of the game, the puzzles made sense and you could figure out pretty easily just by clicking around and talking to people where you were supposed to go or what you were supposed to do next. In regards to both the visuals and the audio, in unforeseen incidents, they're both outstanding. I especially love the backgrounds and locations in terms of the artwork. At first, the character design didn't sit right with me or it was a little bit funky and it's not exactly my favorite, but it fits the world and it fits the backgrounds and, and just the overall style that the artists were going for. But again, it was one of those things by the end of the game, I really liked the choice. And the only real issue is that some of the walking animations are either a little stiff or especially if they are walking up and down stairs, they kind of just float instead of walking. But overall, I love the style and the audio is fantastic. The soundtrack is so good. It's a lot of piano or violin, like soft melodies, a little bit sort of eerie at times, kind of reminiscent of 
X Files or something along those lines. I really enjoyed it when it was there, and and this is one that I could listen to outside of the game. The voice acting, I thought, also was very well done overall. There's a couple of characters that are not quite as believable, a little bit stiff in the way they speak, but again, that's a rarity, and overall, they did a great job, especially the main character. His voice actor was fantastic. All in all, if you can get past the virus-based plot and the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic going on right now, if you can get past all that, it's a very good game. It's really solid, and if you're a fan of point and clicks, and especially the old school style point and click games, I think you'll be very happy with this one, and it fits great on the Nintendo Switch. Jesus, are you all right? Get out of here. Leave me alone. But you need a doctor, or... Wait a minute, is it... Is it the fever? Please. <laughs> Get away from me. Thanks everyone for sticking around through this review. And now it's time to shout out those indie warriors. Bill T, Christian Cruz, Kevalo, Mitchell Hall, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Adriana Amato, CJR, C Coyle, Skeptism, Haley, Julian Colbus, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Bunny, JRS8, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Harp, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, and Eric. Thank you so much for everything you do for indie gaming, and if you'd like to join them, check out the link in the description below.